This video is going to contain a lot of raw, blunt truth, so if you cannot handle this type of thing, then do not watch this video at all, and be warned, there will be some swearing in it as well. So yeah, we live in a world today where most people are literally killing themselves with their food addiction. And this is an epidemic across the globe, and this is why we have so many people with so many different chronic health issues, mentally and physically, and such an issue in the world with obesity, which is just rising and rising and rising every single year. And yet the human world is just a world where it is at a place where we just have the most sickest, unhealthiest of people than we have ever pretty much had in the whole of human existence which is just really, really bad that this is happening. And most people are literally killing themselves with their fork, which when I say that, it is about your food choices that you make and the food that you put on your fork due to the food choices you have made. And most people are making very unhealthy food choices and they are just basing their food choices on their addictions. And it is not necessarily to food that is just highly refined and processed and made specifically not to nourish you and make you as healthy as possible, but to make it as addictive as possible so you keep coming back and buying more and more and more and so you never get off that food. So these big corporate food companies that don't give a fuck about your health whatsoever, they just care about making you addicted to their foods as long as possible so you can maximize their profits. And they're very, very clever. They work with scientists to work out what is the perfect combination of different things that we can put together to make the food as addictive as possible, which is normally fat, sugar, and salt, then a lot of chemical additives such as MSG and other various ones that are known to be carcinogenic and actually neurotoxic where they kill neurons in your brain and cause a whole host of other negative effects as well. So yeah, we just live it in a minefield with all of this food and most people are just living to eat rather than eating to live. So you can make a conscious choice every single day to go in a direction of improving your health or making your health decline. And you may not have control over the government, the weather, your children, or many other different things, but one thing you have control over is yourself. So you just need to make the conscious choice every single day to say no to foods that make you become far from the best version of yourself. And yes, it can be very difficult to avoid certain foods that are refined and processed and very, very addictive, especially when you've been used to eating them for such a long time. And I used to be one of these types of people. I used to drink up to around six quarts of Coca-Cola a day. I had so much candy and junk food and processed food. And I was just an absolute sugar and fat junkie. And I did just get to this point within my life where my health just deteriorated so much. I ended up with depression, hyperhidrosis, ulcerative colitis, anxiety, paranoia, delusional thoughts, and so on. Where I just got to this break point where I said enough is enough and I just started adding more healthy whole foods and over time started removing more and more of the highly processed foods where I got to a point where I just for a very long period of time like years and years and years avoided all processed foods to get rid of all of my health issues and helped me just feel the best that I could within my mind and body. So yeah, I managed to do that. And yeah, some of you will know from watching the video content on my channel, after I'd actually healed myself years ago, I started experimenting with intermittent fasting, which I've been doing over two years now. And I will say, I'm not some enlightened being that doesn't have any junk food whatsoever. There's times where I do have junk food, but I don't make it the basis of my diet and I have it in moderation. And when I say moderation, I mean there be times where I do indulge and then I don't have any junk food for a certain period of time. And what I actually found with intermittent fasting, that it helped me form the healthiest relationship with food where I can say no to junk food easily without having to have loads of self 
control. But then there's times where I'm like, I just want to have some and I could say no, but I'm like, it's all okay. I do intermittent fasting, it helps my body process and eliminate those foods fully. And I know that I'm not going to be an addict where I keep coming back to it time and time again. And if I notice it does affect me in a negative way, I will discontinue eating it because I have enough self-love and self-control to say no. So yeah, if you're someone that's got excess body fat, you're not in optimal health, you just need to be as mindful as you possibly can around foods and see how they affect you when you're eating them. And also ask yourself, is this food gonna help me go closer to the goals that I want with my physique and my health or further away? It's really that simple. And just make the choice if you're self-loving enough and you care about yourself enough to go more in the direction of things that help you go closer towards your goals rather than further away. And yes, you may find at times you try and avoid these foods completely and you can't have the self-control and you mess up, but don't beat yourself up. We are all human and we all make mistakes, but learn from your mistakes and just move forward. And what a lot of people don't realize is the food industry, especially companies that create these processed foods are in the pockets of the pharmaceutical industry as well. So both of these industries want you to be as unhealthy and as sick and as obese as they possibly can get you to be because then you will stay on the pharmaceuticals, stay on their garbage food, for the rest of your life. And a lot of people don't realize that the pharmaceutical industry is around a $1.7 trillion revenue industry, which is just insane amounts of money. So they do not want you to be healthy whatsoever. And I talked about this more in another video that I link up above. So if you wanna hear me go into detail in that subject even more with the pharmaceutical industry, then you click that link up above now. And yeah, there's a lot of people say that what is killing people is the weapons of destruction when in fact it's the food of mass production. And we just didn't used to eat loads of these foods whatsoever. And yeah, you only have to do your research into how we used to eat. We didn't used to have processed packaged foods whatsoever. It is like a big social human experiment that is actually still quite new. Yes, it's been going on for tens and tens of years, but it's still quite a short experiment length. And we're gonna see more and more over the years as we are already starting to see every single different year that comes along, people are just getting sicker and sicker and sicker. Every health issue, the rates of them happening is more and more and more. The amount of people that are obese just keeps skyrocketing higher and higher and higher. Type two diabetes, the list just goes on and on and on. So yeah, if you're eating food that's addictive and is making you feel bad, just stop fucking eating it. It is really, really that simple. And like I said, it may not be easy to stop eating them the majority of the time. But if you have a big enough reason as to why you want to stop eating these foods, then you'll find it easier to avoid them. So yeah, my reason in the past, which I mentioned earlier on, I had so many different health issues. I felt absolutely miserable. I hit rock bottom and that was when I was like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. And a lot of time people need to get to that point. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you try and get to that point. It's better to do it sooner rather than later when you're completely breaking down. But sometimes people need to get to that point to make those changes like I had to many, many years ago. And yeah, one last thing I wanna mention is something I talked about briefly earlier on in this video is intermittent fasting allowed me to form the most healthiest relationship with food. If you don't know what intermittent fasting is, it's just where you fast for a period of time throughout the day, normally around 16 hours, anywhere up to 23 hours, and then you'd eat anywhere from an eight hour to a one hour window. And what I have personally found from doing this over the last two years, it made me become in tune with my body and become aware of more of the foods that my body actually need to feel the best. And it made me realize a lot of time when I've been eating in the past wasn't actually when I was hungry. I was either eating it for an emotional reason or being bored or another different reason. And meal frequency is another thing that really has a negative effect on people's health. And that's the brilliant thing that I found within intermittent fasting. Yes, I can eat certain unhealthy things at time, but because I'm not eating it multiple times a day and I give my body time to eliminate it fully whilst 
in the fasted state that I could find a lot of time I could eat these foods and still feel pretty good from them, as long as I'm not eating them every single day. And I was someone that came from a background of specific different eating disorders, and so many people have them whether they're aware of it or not. So I really recommend that you do as much research as you possibly can on this subject. If you want to learn how to do the 16-8 intermittent fasting diet for weight loss and other benefits such as improving your health holistically, I put a link for a video up above where I talk about that in detail. And at the end of the video, if you're someone that really wants to optimize weight loss, the best type of intermittent fasting diet is a one meal diet where you fast for around 23 hours a day and eat for around a one hour window, which I did for around six months and I felt absolutely amazing from it. And the moment I'm back on it as well. And yeah, if you want to learn about that, I also put a link for a video up above that has over a half a million views. It's one of the highest viewing videos on how to eat one meal a day. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below and give us a thumbs up. If you like the video, if you don't, give us a thumbs down. Please share this video with anyone else and don't forget to click that subscribe button down below and click the bell notification button next subscribe button. Otherwise, YouTube will not notify you of when new videos are uploaded. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic and go get those gains. Peace.